Let's dive into a common array algorithm, buy and sell stock, which is a question I used to ask as a software engineer interviewer. Say you have an array for which the ith element is the price of a given stock on day i. If you were only permitted to complete at most one transaction, that is buying one and selling one share of the stock, design an algorithm to find the maximum profit. Our input is an array of numbers representing stock prices on different days. This can be any arbitrary size, whether it's 5, 10, 15, or whatever. Our output is going to be a single number representing the best profit we can make with one buy and one sell. We do have an edge case, and that's if the stock price is always going down. Instead of taking a loss, we would just not do the transaction and return zero as our best profit. Looking at the array, it's clear that the high is 7 and the low is 1. As the graph shows us, if we buy at 1 and sell at 6, that's going to be most optimal. We can make a profit of 5. The challenge is how do we generalize capturing max profit to a one-size-fits-all algorithm that works for any set of data? Let's imagine moving through our array from left to right in the same direction as time. Now, at any given point in time, the best time to buy is going to be the lowest we've seen so far. In other words, if we're moving from left to right in this array, after we pass one, there's not going to be a better time to buy than that one. Now, we know that even though seven is our high, it's pretty much useless because it comes first. So we know low is the best time to buy. In that case, we just have to find the biggest difference between low and the current value. In other words, on each step, we'll calculate a new profit by subtracting the current value from the current low. So this is how that would look on each step. If that profit beats the best profit we've seen so far, then we would want to save that and then compare it against future profits. Here it is one more time, replacing best when we get a new high. In the end, we'll return our best profit, which was the best we could do with the data we're given. We can bring together all the steps we just talked about into a pseudocode sequence. Most of our checks will happen within the loop, and those are labeled prefixed with one. Finally, when our loop breaks and we check all our values, we'll return that best profit. Now let's translate this logic into code. We'll initialize our function with that single input argument. Here's actually the tricky part. We set a min that we always override by creating an infinity value with Python. Next, our best is going to be initialized to zero. And finally, we dive into our pseudocode. We create a loop looking at each price and prices. Then we'll set our new min price if that price is lower than our current min. Calculating the profit is, of course, important, and we'll save that in a variable because we use it in two different places. We do this simply by subtracting the current price from our best min so far. We check with an if statement to see if that's our new best profit, and if so, it's what we'll use for best profit going forward. And then finally, we're going to return our best profit after we check every price in the loop. Here's that in action one more time. With any algorithm, we have to know it's big O or efficiency. In this case, our time is very efficient. We run one for loop, checking each price only once. That gives us O of N or linear time complexity. In terms of space, we only use a flat three variables, best, min, and profit. Because of that, we use constant space, which reduces down to O of one, which is the best space complexity we can have. With this algorithm, you can quit your job and become a day trader. Anyway, if you liked the video, please like it and subscribe for more of these videos. I'm gonna put some more videos on the screen in case you're interested. Thanks, and I'll catch you guys soon.